life is starting to go get back to normal a little bit. Is it the same? Uh, uh I mean, in, I'm in New York, so it's a little bit slower mm. than the rest of the world because we were the mm. the hot spot. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's we're slowly, slowly starting to get back to opening up, but nothing will probably be normal here until probably I'd say at the earliest, like September, maybe. So it's going to be yeah. a long summer. So we're still technically like in a partial quarantine. So still, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's tough. I mean, have you have you dealt with it? How was? Uh, I mean, work obviously has been slow. Yeah, I mean, there is no work. <laughs> There's no work. <laughs> There's no work. Um, <laughs> not, I've, every production shut down. All casting offices shut down. Um, mm -hmm. Slowly but surely, things are starting to you know pop in. But people, unless you live in certain areas. People aren't sure if, um, like, it's still, you can't shoot anything in New York yet. There's yeah, no, they've not it. been given a green light. So, um, you know, things are slowly but surely, but it's going to be a while. Because once the studios do get open, then they have to go through all sorts of protocols and, you know, all sorts, like, it's a whole other layer. They have to get insurance and make sure they're not going to endanger the cast and crew. And Oh, man, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long, it's gonna be a long lot of money. list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of money. You know, people are eager to get back to shooting, but there's a lot of steps they have to take before they can. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Man. But I do yeah. think I am of the belief that um, we're going to get great art from this. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, be I agree. Everyone is just sitting, writing, great material, no yeah. other obligations. Yeah. The best comedy, probably. Yeah. Sports will come back strong. <laughs> Yeah, everyone yeah. everyone will be well rested for sure. Also that. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that boom, honestly. Yeah. So so where'd you grow up actually? I'm from Chicago. Hmm. Chicago, Illinois. Uh oh, I am actually, born and raised. I'm wearing a <laughs> Oh Bulls, yeah. Nice go Bulls. <laughs> yeah. I I was yeah. the fortunate I was a young kid. I got to grow up, you know, watching Michael Jordan and everybody in the heyday. So it was wow. pretty cool being in Chicago um during that time. I actually realized that what like my interest in basketball only came uh, through Michael Jordan. I only realized that when watching The Last Dance from the Impact. I just remembered my cousin putting me onto him, and then mm -hmm. I started begging my dad to get me a Chicago Bulls ball for Christmas. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. And I, I still wish them well all the them. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was it was really fun. I I loved being in Chicago at that time. It was like the heyday. I was a kid. Me and mm -hmm. my dad would watch the game. Um, so yeah, so I'm born and raised. Most of my family is from Chicago. Um, most of my family's still there. Um, but yeah, I'm a Chicago, Chicago girl at heart. Awesome. <laughs> and what kind of upbringing did you have there? Um, pretty normal, you know, suburban ish. We lived in the city for a while. Um, mm -hmm. but I grew up in a fairly, you know, middle-class household. You know, my parents were in the corporate world. Um, and they just always encouraged me to, you know, go after what I wanted, um, you know, train for it, but be able to, you know, you're, I was able to pursue my dreams. So I'm very mm -hmm. lucky that my parents uh, supported that. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I'm uh, in a similar situation. Um, and um, it, it means a lot because there's, uh, there are certain ways to go about it. Uh, you can, you can do it to a way to the point that the kids just never end up doing anything or you right. can... Do it in a way that they have to prove to you that they can make a living out of it, you know, and uh, and yes. then slowly but surely, you know, you get there. I mean, yes, how was that I for had you? To do you that. Um, I had to prove to my parents I can make a living for sure. <laughs> how how but did they that were go? supportive. Um, you know, like when in what I way? My, like, uh, I guess when I was younger, um, you know, my my parents were very. They encouraged me to pursue my dreams, but they were also very focused on work. They're like, you have to put in hard work to get what you want. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, I probably started taking this career seriously when I was closer to high school. I did it kind of for mm -hmm. fun before that. Um, and then I ended up getting to go to a performing arts high school. And that's when I kind of started training, uh, you know, with this as a career in mind. Um, but I'm a musical theater kid. So like I started mm -hmm. in chorus and theater and musicals and that's kind of where my love for theater came from mm -hmm. um dancing and all that stuff so I, I trained I used to dance um but so my parents were encouraging but they was also very much like you know you have to put in the work you have to be the best 
Um, mm-hmm. You can't just want it. You have to, I had to show them that I wanted it, oh, you yeah. know? And not treat it like a hobby, treat it like a profession. Exactly, exactly. And even with all the hardships that come with it and... Yeah. Yes, all the ups and downs, that. all this, the most, you know, all, all of it. So I, I think they took me seriously when I started, you know, just showing them that I was ready to put in the work. Cool. Yeah. And do, nowadays, like, oh, obviously, everything has shifted the whole way of promoting yourself and getting mm-hmm. roles or whatever. So what would you recommend um, high school kids, middle school kids who want to get into it to, to do now? to get themselves um, out there. I, I, to be honest, it may seem like it's changed, but you still have to put in the work. You know, mm. you can promote yourself on social media all you want or pretend like you're some sort of, you know, celebrity. But I think that the, the people that have long lasting careers and do this for their entire life have put in the training. So I would encourage everybody that's young and in, wants to pursue this as a career to get in training get some sort of Mm -hmm. school. You can take online programs. You can take online classes now, especially with the quarantine, everything is much more accessible online. Um, So even if it's just, you know, you reading plays or reading scripts and practicing Mm -hmm. in your bedroom, I think the best way to start, especially when you're younger, is to start training. Start taking this seriously if you really want it as a career. I I don't think there are any shortcuts. I don't think there are any tricks. I think it comes really down to the training. So that's what I'm a huge proponent of. I work with kids all the time and it's just like, you have to mm-hmm. put in the work. Same thing, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, how my parents made, like I had to show them that I wanted to put in the work and it's paid off. You know, there was yeah. no like wishing that I could get these things. I, I worked for them. So. Yeah. And also like people, people always see only the smallest part of the, of someone's career in entertainment. So they forget, yes. you know, they, they think someone might be a, or a one hit wonder or they got lucky, but they don't see the, 20, 25 they don't years, see whatever. the work exactly there it. is no the people that you see on screen have worked for years before that you know have been mm-hmm. broke before that i i you know i'm not even uh, although i've had some success in my career i'm i'm still working i'm still training i'm still in acting class i am still mm-hmm. you know working with coaches i still have to audition for roles you know yeah it's a lot of work it's a lot of work there's a lot so of people that also. I think if you also, start young, hmm. you can. I think if you start young, you get used to just working for it. You know. Yeah, yeah, it becomes second nature. You mean? Yes. Yeah. And it's just yeah, and uh, the blows start becoming less and less painful. You know, mm-hmm. you start mm-hmm. getting used to rejection. I guess. Yes. How did you have to learn yes. that? Like how? I guess uh, so. You grew up in Chicago. When when did you move to New York? Was it when you really thought you could make a career out of this? Um, I moved to New York after I graduated from college. So I went to uh, University of Michigan um, and I majored in their musical theater program. Um, mm-hmm. And after that, the, the program kind of sets you up to have a showcase in New York. And I just knew I always wanted to be there because when I first started my career, I really wanted to be on Broadway. Um, so if you want to be on Broadway, you got to go to New York. Um, oh, yeah. So that was, that's why I ended up in New York was because I wanted to be on Broadway. And uh, so uh, moving there, what are some of the hardest times you can ima- remember in, in terms of landing get, or getting any kind of work in this sphere? Mm-hmm. Um, some, I mean, the, when I moved there, you know, I didn't have an agent. I wasn't a part of any union. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I had to go get a restaurant job because I needed to pay rent. Um, and back in the day, Uh, because I was specifically focusing on theater, um, you know, you would go to open calls. You would, Mm -hmm. you know, wake up at, you know, four o'clock in the morning, go sign up on a list of names. It's called a, you know, ECC call. And you go sign up on a list and you'd hope to get seen that day. And sometimes Mm -hmm. you'd wait around all day and then they wouldn't see you. Um, So it was like kind of like that bad, that, that, that struggle of just, getting up and wanting to get seen and wanting to audition and then maybe not even getting the opportunity to, um, because I was on the lowest rung of the totem pole, you know? Oh yeah. Um, so I think that was kind of, that was definitely a challenge of just like having the, the gumption to keep going and to keep showing up and knowing that one day I would get seen and one day I would get to that audition and one day I would be able to join the union. Um, Mm -hmm. And it, it happened, but it took a while, you know? 
when was that do you remember and and what changed um, so the first thing that changed for me was i was able to join the union i first joined the um theater union which is um actors equity and mm -hmm. that helped um that helped me get into like the broadway rooms right because if you're on broadway you have to be in the union so mm -hmm. When I was able, I so it's like a whole process to get your equity card, and it's changed now. But normally, you have to work at a small, like we have regional theaters, like smaller theaters and smaller cities you go to, and um, if you do a show there, sometimes they'll give you your equity card. Um, mm -hmm. So I was able to do a small show in South Carolina, and that's how I got my first. My I guess I got my equity card. So once you join the union, it becomes a little bit easier. You can get into a little bit more rooms. I was able to then get an agent, which helped get me into even more rooms. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so that getting getting my equity card definitely helped tip the scale. Um, yeah. But then it still was just auditions. You know, there's no jobs just because you're in the union. You know, I'm just auditioning and auditioning and auditioning a lot. Um, so my first big job was the I booked the national tour of dream girls and okay. that was um my first like big role my first big role my first big job my first equity contract um and i do believe once people see that you're capable of doing that work then you kind of get more work after that you know because they see that you're oh, able yeah. to perform on a certain level mm -hmm. so that's kind of where it performing started performing on a on a stage is always different because you can't mess up. <laughs> you yeah. can't mess up yeah. and uh, you yeah. know, there are no Live retakes theater. or whatever. So yeah. definitely theater is probably the, yeah, that's, that's the, the first place where you start to really mm -hmm. push your career to get forward. your skills. Yeah. 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 And like, um, and now you got Netflix <laughs> and you've been, <laughs> so you've been involved with Netflix. Uh, so, yeah, I have a couple projects. I have a couple of my shows uh, I have on Netflix. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, it is. And Netflix it, has been has been great. So I was wondering, because uh, we always think and everybody was waiting in anticipation for like, how, how is this going to change the industry and shift it? Um, mm -hmm. It sort of blended um, old school, traditional studio ways of promoting or that, you know, mm -hmm. studio has had the control to sort of mixing it with YouTube with that kind of platform. Yeah, you had the choice, and they just put a lot of content in the first few years. And yes, well, how do you think Netflix is shifting the industry? Mm. I think Netflix shifted the industry. I think we have the industry mm. we do we have now because of Netflix. You know, there's there wouldn't be any of these other streaming platforms if it hadn't been for Netflix. You know, mm -hmm. like Orange Is the New Black was the first series that created the binging culture. You know, that was the first yeah. original Netflix series that everyone binged when it came out. Um, we didn't really do that with shows before Netflix. So no. I think that Netflix was able to create a culture where everything, I mean, it's like the social media of, of you know, like everything is just at mm -hmm. your fingertips. Uh, you can binge 12 episodes and bang it out in one day. And, you know, definitely. so I, I, I think that, I'm a fan of Netflix because I think that it provided the opportunity for all of these other streaming platforms with all of this other great content. Um, and I don't think things like Apple TV or, you know, Amazon Prime or, you know, whatever these, uh, uh, you know, those other ones, I don't think they would exist without Netflix. So it definitely oh, changed well, the game. Yeah, it's, uh, and it also, I, I noticed, uh, so in the beginning, of course, their strategy seemed to be putting out it's like quantity over quality at some point and now it's sort of they're finding their niche and uh you know yeah a lot of short form you know mm -hmm. videos and giving a lot of uh a lot of actors work i believe like a lot of uh, oh, yeah. they don't go for the they, they go they, they start scouting unknown names and you know putting them on giving them a platform some of them grow and yes i think that that's the beauty you, of netflix yeah yeah so uh is it think you're gonna you know be involved with them a lot more or? well you know i i can't control any of that in my career you know mm -hmm. my stage is i audition i i audition just... i audition and i get it and sometimes i don't you know so mm -hmm. i have had um i have a netflix movie coming out i don't actually know when it's coming out it's coming out at some point this year but and it's not um netflix is 
the the umbrella, but there's not right. like working with Netflix. Netflix has so many so many people and so many like companies and things. So like most of the time you're not really working with Netflix. It's just, they, they mm, have produced yeah. your work. You're working with, you know, the, the, the separate production company and then the, the Netflix picks up their project, you know, it's like providing the platform and slapping their label on it. And exactly, exactly. But they're not necessarily co connected until the project is over. Oh yeah. So they decide whether to buy it or not, is it? Yes, yes, yeah, correct. Okay. That's, how, yeah. that's how it works. Yeah, because um, and then a lot of times I've bought, I, and I think um, Casa de Papel was bought also. <clears throat> I think there was a show that existed for many years in, uh, mm -hmm. and then they, they took it o took over it and now they created yeah. a new season. Yeah, and sometimes Netflix does, like they do create shows, they, they do have original Netflix series, you know, so they, they oh, do yeah. both. Mm -hmm. So... But yeah, you know, I, I hope to work with Netflix. I, you know, it's just. Yeah, I love, I love where going. it's going to. <laughs> yeah. And you've worked with uh, my, one of, probably my, my favorite platforms, which is uh, HBO. Because <laughs> they, they provide, they just, everything they put out is quality, really. Yeah, for the they most just part. Hit. And, uh, yeah. Because I, uh, my friend and I, there's a friend of mine who's a big movie buff and he used to be my co-host as well on, the, on a previous show we had. And mm -hmm. um, we always go like, Watch, watch shows and sort of try to predict which actors and actresses are going to make it or are going to grow. Mm. And then uh, <laughs> I named you as one. Uh, <laughs> I loved your, um, your character on The Deuce. Oh, thank you. And I checked The Deuce because I'm, um, I'm just a big fan of everything James Franco does. Mm -hmm. So um, I was wondering, so how, uh, how did you land that and how did you prepare for the role? Um, let's see. I landed that like any other, you know, I auditioned. Auditioning. I went in for, yeah, I auditioned for the role. Um, probably, yeah, it was around maybe like, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was in during pilot season. So it was, you know, a uh, a small scene. I didn't think anything of it really. I didn't know that it was going to be recurring. It just kind of was a couple lines. Um, and the night when I found it, I got it. So it was, you know, obviously very exciting because it's mm -hmm. David Simon and the wire writers yeah. which is like you know goals the wire is still to my in my opinion one of the best shows ever um, incredible and still every day people yeah talk about it's like it, it doesn't die right it's still relevant mm -hmm. um so i was just stoked that i was gonna get to work with with them because it's just it's like dream like a dream um yeah. so yeah so i auditioned i got the role um and then you know they started to unfold like how my character would be involved and i you know i did i made sure that I was up on all the characters. I was up on, you know, the show's history and mm. really for me, like for preparing for a role like that, it's just, how can I bring my true essence to the character? You know, how can mm. I, like, who is this person? It's like exploring who this character is, where, where does she come from? You know, um, what, what kind of things does she do when she's not at work? Um, what drives her to do this job, you know? So you, I really like to work on the backstory of the character mm -hmm. so that I don't have to work too much when I'm on set. Like, I just already know who this person is, you know? And do you sort of channel that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say method acting or anything, but like more... No, really no, sort of... more like, more like just like backstory, history mm -hmm. developing, you know, like the, the true essence. But you sort of, of have to remember that uh, as in put yourself in her shoes and... Yeah. And I guess it because you know, we when you do in this doing this for so long, it just kind of like I, I know exactly like where I need to drop into. You know, I know exactly who mm. this person is. I know how she carries herself, I know how she walks, you know. Um mm. and that just takes like a little bit of doing the research on your own, you know. Um Yeah. So yeah, and then also like, you know, she was a black detective in the eighties, mm. you know, there weren't many of them. So yeah. how did she get there? You know, like it's so it's just kind of fascinating to flesh out that character. It's cool. And uh, I thought this the whole show was amazing. I, I love um, shows that really like sort of look into the subcultures of uh, a certain era and just based on, on true events. And mm -hmm. I mean, um, you, you, you seem to were you always. Uh, did you have a thing for uh, crime shows or like sort of being a detective because it seems like that you I get a lot no, of these roles. I know I've been a detective <laughs> uh, a lot of times. Um, Are you really no. a detective in real life? I, I know. <laughs> no. no, I guess that's just, you know, where 
when you're starting out and where, you know, where like, mm. cause I think people have this kind of misguided interpretation of the industry. Like you can kind of control, you, you can control, but a lot of it is what, especially when you're starting off, a lot of it is what's given to you. So I guess I just have the detective vibe. So I yeah. just was, you know, I booked those roles. Um, and I'm, pr I, just, I love that. I love that. I'm not, I don't even like, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, they're strong. they tend to be strong, strong characters, you know, yeah. they're in control. They're, they're very, they're very interesting. Um, so I love it. I'll play detective all day. <laughs> True detective. Season yeah. Four, is it right? Because season, yeah. they have three seasons. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's see. Let's HBO. see if they do that. Cause you should, yeah. you should, <laughs> but also at the same time, what would you do or what do you think you're doing to pr avoid being typecast? Maybe that's something um, a lot of actors probably struggle with as well. Yeah, yes, it can't. You can't. Yes, I do know actors that have struggled with typecast and play the same roles mm. over and over again. To be honest, I think it comes down to personal desire and what you want. Um, I also know that me being typecast is going to be very different from someone else. Um, I'm not mm. going to play a role that I don't not that I don't fit fit, but like if I can't click into the true essence of the character, then I, it's probably not going to be a good fit for me. You know, like I probably won't book that yeah. job. Um, but typecasting, if you, if some, if some actors do really struggle with it, I think it's easier to avoid as you get further along in your career. Um, mm. But some people also just enjoy playing it. Like it's just being on set yeah. and, and, and working your butt off and then getting a job is, it's a really a lot of work just to get on screen. Like people don't understand that. So for me, I'll, I can only speak personally. I'm not, I, I don't think I've technically been typecast, even though I've played detectives, they've been very, very different kinds mm -hmm. of detectives. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. as long as the character has a heart, as long as the character is developed and, and, and has some depth to them, then I don't, I don't mind, yeah. you know? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Are there any uh, TV shows and movies that you sort of uh, drew inspiration from the most? Um, just uh, or shows. Maybe those are like shows that you wish you were in from from the past. Or oh, um, you know, I try not to do that because I think that everything is for me will come to me. You know, mm -hmm. like I try not to say, oh, I wish I would be in that show. But, you know, yes, oh. obviously there are shows that I love, like I love, um, you know, like Succession. I think that's a brilliant show, show I would love to have a care, you know, a role. There's not a role that I would, that is in that show that is for me, but I could, you know, that's like my, my style of, of storytelling that I really enjoy. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's a brilliant show. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's so many shows that, yes, that it, they're so brilliant. I would love to be in, but. Not in like a, oh man, you know, it's just like, oh, that's yeah, a really yeah, yeah. cool show, no. you know? So, um, but yeah, the, the do... section is the first one off the top of my head on HBO. Like you could, you could manifest those, I guess. It seems like you, you're into manifestation as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that what you put out into the universe is what the universe pays back to mm -hmm. you. You know, I think that the more positive you speak onto yourself and onto the things around you, the more the, I think the universe is always listening to what you say, even if you don't say it out loud, like it's listening to what you do. It's listening to your thoughts. Um, so I do think it's important to, I, I think manifesting is very important. So, and, and you don't even think about it at the time, but like the things that have come to me, I have manifested, you know, they're the things that mm -hmm. I've wanted. So. Is it more of a spiritual thing for you or is it more of a mindset thing? You I think, think it shifts. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of mm. spiritual because you have to have faith that the thing you can't that just you sit around and do nothing and then exactly. wait for it to happen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You have to have faith that it will work out and that you yeah, will yeah, get yeah. the things that you want. But then you also do have to not sit around and put into action. So I think it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a mindset and a little bit from the spiritual side. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's a, uh, I, I believe so too. And then when you're in a, period like this or or at any other time and there's just you're getting just rejections uh or mm -hmm. there's nothing out there what do you do to keep you motivated to keep you getting out of bed in the morning um i think that comes with faith 
<laughs> you know, mm -hmm. faith that that my that my situation is not permanent. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. working right now, but I know that's not permanent. I always say, yeah. and I say this a lot. I I've worked. I want. I worked, and I will work again. Like there's no doubt in my mind. You yeah, know, I think that that's a brilliant brilliant mindset. Yeah, because yeah. you just you can't. It's so easy to get bogged down. And trust me, I'm not perfect, and I definitely do get caught up in the emotion of the rejection and and the not working and the not hearing anything. And you know, so it definitely is tough and it's a a, a struggle. But I you know I do always have to remind myself of that. What are you looking for in projects nowadays? Like, because you've already been through the beginning stages, and now you're landing more work and better mm -hmm. work. I think um, on Gotham, you're. Uh, recurring character yeah like now what would um, you really crave doing like a next step um for me next step is to get to a uh a series regular like a mm -hmm. like a major a main character that's on every week that's the goal that i'm working on right now um so that's what i want um i would love it to be on a major network um, but I'm working on getting a series regular role that is that is um, you know a, a major character because I kind of play side characters and and it's great. I I've loved every role that I've ever had. I've totally mm -hmm. loved and and thoroughly enjoyed every experience. So now it's just a matter of you know you just keep plugging away and I'll still play recurring characters. But I would like to yeah. my 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 immediate goal is is a series regular role, which I know is coming. Um, but you know, again, it's that it's that waiting game of you keep auditioning, you keep going, you just have to keep putting in the work and know that the results will eventually come. Just a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed now in uh, after lockdown, during lockdown, that just what you got to do is just whatever you do, um, keep looking at the things you do have and keep putting stuff out there, putting your work out there, and never stop working. And yeah. that's how you'll be seen. Um, you'll yes. be used to the rhythm, and yeah, I guess it's the same with actors. Then, as you're you're saying, yes, you just have it's to keep. Uh, you are you do you have to promote yourself to now. You definitely have to have some sort of social presence. You know, you have to promote yourself, and but mm -hmm. yeah, you just you keep putting in the work. Like I said, even from a young age, you keep putting in the work, and eventually, it will all come to fruition. It's not going to happen when you want it. It's not going to happen how you want it, but it will come. It, it will, will come. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's uh what uh, what else have you got going on uh or do you have any other uh goals maybe within the film and TV industry that uh, you're working on right now? Um, you know, in immediately um I I just I want to continue to tell stories. I am an actor. Hmm. It's what I love to do. Um I'm looking in the future to start uh collaborating with people and helping people create their stories. Um, not necessarily, I'm not, I, I do write, but it's not my favorite thing to do. I'm much more of a collaborator. I much more mm. have like, um, you know, an editor's kind of mind. Um, brainstorm. So I'm, yeah, like brainstorming, like, and like once projects are done, like how to get the story out. So I'm, I'm, I have a couple friends and we have like just projects that we're working on to kind of, um, but it's more collaborative, you know? So mm -hmm. I believe that, once I get to a certain level, it will be my mission to help other people get their stories told. Um, and I would love to be a part of those stories. Okay. That, that, it's like a bit of a, is it like a, like an institution or like, like a, I guess, so, I guess technically if you have to name, name it, it would be more of like producing, you know, like more like helping okay. people mm. producing to get their, to get their projects out there, you know? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Uh, there's a uh, these days, I noticed there's like this. Um, maybe studios have had a hard time promoting movies if the lead actor isn't a big name who is actively putting themselves out there, like uh, Kevin mm -hmm. Hart or a, or The Rock. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. in that yep. way. What do you think should be done about this? Like, how can studios promote their movies better? And you know, mm. yeah, you mean if they don't have a name. Yeah, if they don't have, or, or, or if they're, yeah, yeah, actually, if they don't have a name with someone with a, or who's not extremely active in promoting their stuff on social media or. Right. Because Kevin Hart think... and, and The Rock, I would see like as a big example of uh, hard, hard work and just putting themselves everywhere. And they work with all these YouTubers and just mm -hmm. content, content, content. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think to some degree, we have to start to train the American audience 
because I think mm. American audiences, well, I, just audiences in general, we, it's like a standard that like you need a celebrity in order for you to go see a project, right? Or to go see a movie. Yeah. So I think to some degree, it just takes, I think we'll eventually, we have to retrain the audience to, to know that like, just because your favorite celebrity isn't in this movie doesn't mean it's not going to be good. Right. But you still have to get people to show up to the, the box office. Um, and yeah. same with TV. Like I, I actually was, um, I just saw today that they canceled um, Beauty and the Baker and it's on ABC. And I watched it. I, I obviously watched a lot of TV because I need to see mm. what's out there. Um, but I, yeah. I loved it. I absolutely thought it was so cute and so simple, but, but complex and it had great characters. Um, and I really enjoyed it. But I found out today they canceled it. And same thing because people didn't tune in. Cause there's not a huge, huge name. Like the leads are kind of like, I, I had never seen some of the, the, the leads before, um, but people didn't tune in and so it gets canceled. So the same thing with, t you know, like I just, yeah. I think that we need to retrain the audience, the American audience to know that just because your favorite actor isn't in it doesn't mean it's not worth turning it, tuning in. Yeah, perhaps that's where um, the streaming platforms do have it right and that, that'll shift everything. So probably mm -hmm. going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I agree. And have maybe if this show was on, if this ABC show was on Netflix, maybe it would have had a bigger audience, you know, because of that, right? You're mm. right, more, you're going to be on Netflix. You're going to be more in tuned to, to tune on something that you've never seen. You've never seen those people before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So it's just out there and the algorithm works well. Yes. Yes. It exactly. didn't used to work. It's, it's working well now. I remember I <laughs> got recommended some things and I was like, let's never watch <laughs> yeah, anything yeah. near this in my life. <laughs> but but <laughs> it's, it's going good now. <laughs> you know um yeah so it, it, it's so how would you train i don't know so how long would that process take you think like for you training <laughs> I, the audience and what I is that know. what does that say about cinema like is cinema and theaters is that gonna die you know i don't think it's gonna die but i do think that I don't, you know, I don't, it might not ever change, right? It might just always be this, this machine that needs a celebrity in it for it to work, you mm -hmm. know, but like, even with American theater, like we've gotten, and I'm speaking mostly musical theater, um, with music, American musical theater, audiences have gotten so used to seeing, you know, movie musical remakes, like, you know, there's like a million movie musicals on Broadway right now. And it's yeah. like, that's fine. But don't people want original stories? Like, don't people want to see stories they've never seen before? Yes. Um, but people have to, you're asking people to jump outside of their comfort zone, which a lot of people aren't, aren't, don't want to do. So I, I don't know if it'll ever change. What? No, I was telling my friend that. Sorry, but continue first. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't, I don't think that people, I don't think people really want to change. Um, so I think it's maybe more of a dream that I have of retraining the mm. audience. Um, and I hope that one day, you know, like even like, you know, movies like Moonlight, you know, mm. it got the buzz and it, it was a very well done story. And, and, you know, I think if, if people keep putting out content that is just good on its own without a name, I do think that will help. It might not change yeah. it, but I think more projects that come out that are just really good projects will help change the wave a little bit. It's true because the the best stories I can think of are the the best uh, TV shows, movies have been things based on real events or, or historical events. You know, like not sure. fiction. Like fiction is sort of. I I'm, I'm waiting for something really good to come again. Mm -hmm. Like back, mm -hmm. I remember like years ago, probably like even just even a, a decade ago. That's the last time when you had like every month there was a great movie to watch. Mm -hmm. You had this movie mm -hmm. pass, and now it's just. The ones that pop but now everybody's recreating events. things. They're recreating yeah. movies from the you know every. It's just like another remake, another remake, and a, you know three of this and two of that, and it's yeah, and it's yeah, it, it, it's not it very exciting. The same. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> I no. agree. Is it um, and and then it's, the funny thing is like in in the movie uh, the movie in the music industry, I just noticed like there's so many new artists like that's growing so so much that even so, there's so many people that you've never heard of that have many many millions of, of followers and a backing and mm -hmm. i don't really see that in the movie industry and tv world like why do you think that is so you're saying that you don't see like right. unknown like just people that have been working for yeah that the actors mm -hmm. there's not 
as many actors who have that big of a of a following or you know because it takes a long time mm. it takes a long long time and you still might not even get it at the end of the of your career you know no mm. matter how many years you've been working like how many times you know it happens all the time when i have on the tv or i, I and i someone's on there i'm like oh it's like i've seen this guy for years and i don't even yeah. know his name you know like he's been in oh, all yeah, these yeah. shows all these movies like i don't even know his name you mm. know so I think it is a part of the culture that we've created. We are addicted to celebrity. We are addicted to the names that we know. And it goes back mm -hmm. to what people feel comfortable with, you know? So, yeah. you know, and it, right. You have to, you have to land the, the big role to get that to, that's just the bottom line. You have to land that big role to get that, that following. Otherwise you kind of just float along, which Absolutely, there's nothing yeah. wrong with. Some people don't want that, you know? No, no. But I think I'm, I'm trying to decipher it all the time, like because it, it just shifts, especially in the last uh, five, ten years. It's it's shifted more than ever, I think, because of mm -hmm. the streaming platforms and the way technology mm -hmm. is changing. The same way that music, um, you know, from vinyl to cassette went so long, was such a long time, and then cassette to CD, and then suddenly it's like CD to digital, yeah, and then digital no to, CD. <laughs> to streaming, and then yeah, yeah. exactly, it's, it just goes yeah. every two years, it changes and stuff. But here it's it's it, it is going slowly. And um, yeah, just trying to find find the solution. Yeah. <laughs> like what what kind of music are you listening to? I think that's a big ask. I think that's a big mm. ask. Oh, yeah. actually, no. Yeah, one thing is I uh, was thinking it popped in my mind. Like, what about uh, the independent movie scene and such? Because you know, if if uh, bigger actors fund certain movies, like those movies are doing very well now, and they're original, and you know, but yeah. you don't see too many of them. Yeah, I mean, there, uh, there definitely, it's definitely like, I definitely think that there is um, more of a trend now for celebrities to be involved with independent films or to produce independent films, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that independent films will always kind of belong where they are, you know, like they serve a mm -hmm. purpose. And, and I think to get independent movies mainstream is going to be one in a million, you know, like one every couple hundred might, might break through. So, because that's just, they're not, they're to some degree, they don't have that target audience that like, you know, mainstream blockbuster target audience. They're not going to go see an independent film over, you know, Transformers 6 or whatever, you know? It's, uh, yeah, so. maybe, maybe I'm in the minority and I think that I'm in the majority here. Like, <laughs> some of the independent Trust me, I'm great. on your page. Like, I totally understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get some people together. I mean... Hey, James Franco can do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Wait. lots of people, you know. Mm -hmm. He he does kind of can flip back and forth. He can go between genres, you know. Yeah, what do you think that is? Like, why? I think. It and John Favreau with... has the same thing. I notice a lot of the time. Yeah, but he's also a director, think... and. Yeah, I think it just comes with the resources that you have. You know, the mm. the resources and the things that are available to you, and I think also being persistent. You know, like James Franco, I was fortunate. He actually directed um, a couple episodes of The Deuce. So I got to, mm -hmm. you know, um, work with him. And I think getting those opportunities just comes with persistence of, th again, like speaking it out there, saying what you want. You know, that's yeah. the career that he wanted. As soon as he got to a certain level, he was able to create it, you know. And he paints and yeah, and he writes and he teaches and yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. So actually, since you since you've worked with him, mm -hmm. and that's one way to network. Like, what do you suggest is the best way for uh, actors and people that want to get involved in the movie and TV business to network mm -hmm. and get themselves um, out there? I think that some of the best ways to network, quote unquote, if you're like in like I'm speaking specifically from like my experience and acting and stuff. Yeah. Um, the best, the most successful I've been, um, is connecting with casting directors because I think casting hmm. directors are the gatekeepers to the industry. Really. They're the ones that are going to grant you the auditions. They're the ones that are going to send your tape to producers. They are the hmm. ones who are going to be on your side um, throughout this whole process. So networking is cool. It's great. But if you're on the, the lower, the lower level, you know, you got to You got to, make friends with the casting directors. That's my personal opinion, because I think that 
especially when yep. you're just like you, they, they're just they're just who you see all the time. They are the front they are the front lines for you to mm. get to the next level. So um, I think if you're you're just if you're going on auditions, make sure you have really good relationships with the casting directors. I think that's how I've gotten a lot of my jobs. Is I just made sure that every casting director in New York City knew who I was. I had good relationships mm. with them. I made sure I had a great audition with them. You know, like and then they will continue to call me in. You know, it's like, probably so much easier to to audition for them once you know them, of course. Yes, once you know them, and then they trust you, right? So it's like, so <laughs> I think that instead of like trying to, you know, network and meet people, it's like, well, start where you what you, with what you have, which is you have the power to audition, and those people <laughs> are going to be on your side. So I wouldn't have, have the jobs I had without casting directors. Wait, how you, how would you go about that? Like, how would you find the Mm. or really you mean getting in a natural way yeah because yeah. Uh, well i mean networking with the casting directors because actually we're just a recent guest we had was talking about networking too and the thing mm -hmm. we both sort of concluded is that um networking you know people often go in there at networking events or whatever uh with the goal of getting a, something beneficial for them right rather than saying going in there with the mindset of oh i just think i know you need this for me and I think I can help you with that and you just mm -hmm. go in there selflessly you know not expecting anything in return like mm -hmm. but it's a different industry so yeah. how do you how would you go about that yeah I mean if you're fortunate enough to get called in for auditions yeah you can't come in from a sense of of desperation or from a sense of I need you to like me you know you do have to be kind of confident within your own self to know that right you have a service that you're here to provide and they want it and they either want it or they don't right they either hire you or they don't mm -hmm. and you have to be able to keep going um so i think that like i don't know it's a little bit of a yeah it's it's just it's not it's not cut and dry it also depends on your personality um but i think that it is beneficial to know that really your only job is to make a friend with the casting director. It's not to get them yeah. to like you, you know, it's mm -hmm. to get them to trust you. And you can't come from a place of despair or neediness. Yeah. So that's a good tip. Yeah. And ever tried something extreme in, a, in an audition to sort of try to sway the casting directors no. or something crazy? <laughs> No, that's not really in my personality. <laughs> I'm pretty, um, I'm on the quieter side. I like to follow the rules. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's just how, that's just how I've always been. Um, you know, no, besides like sometimes, you like know, like adding, I mean, adding twists to the character or to the, the way you say certain, your lines or. No, because I think it all has to come from a place of groundedness and honesty. I can't, you can't mm -hmm. just do it for a trick. You can't just do mm -hmm. it because like, oh, you think that would be funny if it doesn't come from the true essence of the character, then it's not going to be believable no matter what you do. So, yeah, that probably means that the characters you've played are a bit, a bit of a reflection of you as well, that it's more genuine. To some degree, yeah. To some yeah, degree, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's like adding little twists to your own personality. Yes, yes, absolutely. For, for me right now, that's where I, that's where I found I've been more, most successful, is just bringing an essence of myself to the character. So no tricks, like no... No crazy things, you know. No, no. Breaking honestly, out and dance really. when it's just a serious movie. Yeah. No, I, you yeah. know, people want to see you. You want, like, when you go in the room, they want to see who you are, you know. They want to yeah, see yeah. your honesty. They don't want to see your shtick, you know, the things yeah. you can do. They want you to tell the story. So. I think that's a key for longevity. I do. I think you need to be able to tell the story. I think you need to be a great storyteller. I think you need to be a great listener. Some of the best actors in the world are the best listeners on the planet. And you can see how well they listen to, you mm -hmm. know, when they're in scenes. You, you have to be a great listener. So, mm -hmm. and it can't be about yourself. You can't be, you know, you can't, you can't, can't be about yourself, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Do you, so is it like, you also sort of learn when you're doing a scene, you really learn to listen to the other person, your, your, your co-characters lines as yes. if it's happening in, in real life and sort of in processing that. Even if this I know like what they're going to say. like four different things going on at the same time in your brain then. Yes. Yes. Even if I know what they're going to say, I know what I'm going to say, but I am still present. I am still listening. And I think that the people on TV and the people that we love to watch are doing that as well. 
Mm. If you're, yeah. if you're in your head and you're like just waiting for your line to come, it's, it's, it's not going to be fun to watch. If, once you know what you're yeah. looking for, they, people can mask it and people can play it off really well. But I know when I'm watching TV, I know when people are listening and when they're not. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I that know. just comes from some of my training, you know, that's Sometimes. just how I was trained. I mean, I've done some theater myself in high school and um, that was, I think the biggest, uh, the most difficult thing at that point was sort of, okay. Because if you, if you're thinking too much about your own line, forget to listen, that's some, mm -hmm. actually when you forget your lines or you, when you sort of, for me, that's when I would freeze. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if you learn you to listen, you can sort of, even if you forgot it, you sort of can not necessarily <laughs> improvise, but add your own. <laughs> yeah, well, you can, you you'll know. That's what I'm saying. Like, you'll know where you're you you'll know where you are in the story, even if you forget yeah. your lines. You'll know what's happening. But if mm -hmm. you're stuck in your own head, then it's just not yeah. going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. What's the lastly, like, what's the best maybe word or words of advice that you've had or that you can give younger aspiring actors? Mm, um. Probably you got to believe in yourself, you know, don't wait for validation from somebody else, from a job, from, you know, an audition, like from a director, you know, you can't, you can't look for validation from other people. You have to truly believe in yourself and have confidence in yourself. And that will carry you, not the outside world. And because you're going to get rejected over and over and over and over again. But if you believe in yourself and your own talents, you will be able to push through. Hmm. And that's easier said than done. Like, how do you block oh, out all absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, just habit now. It's just habit. Like, I don't even blink hmm. when I don't get a job. I don't even like. I I, I don't even like stress about it because hmm. it. But it. But it's taken. It's taken years and years and years of practice to just kind of grow yeah. a thicker skin. Now it doesn't faze mm -hmm. me, but when I first started, yeah, I was devastated every time I didn't get a job. You know, I was really upset and crying and, you know, all this stuff, but eventually it just gets easier. So that's why you have to have the confidence in yourself to just keep going and keep going. It's not easy. It's, it's terrible. And still, sometimes I get knocked down, you know? Yeah. But it's the ability to get, get up is what sets you apart from the people that aren't working. Absolutely. Basically. Absolutely. Awesome. I believe that. Yeah. Well, I wasn't. I was gonna ask you like the last, like uh, what what kind of music what? are you listening to? Do you have any uh, upcoming artists that you would like to share as well? I just wanted oh, to start music? adding that to the show as well. Yeah, hmm. or, or yeah, music, and then I'm gonna ask you about some actors that we should know okay. about. Okay. Okay. Um, music. I'm just gonna because I do. I I love music. Um. Yeah. Um. I really like up and coming artists or like people that people haven't heard of, maybe. Yeah. Or some, um, yeah, smaller artists that you, whatever smaller is in your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I people like who so deserve much. more recognition, that's what I mean. Mm, I have to look through my, my list because I don't know. Um, people that I love right now, um, oh, you know what? Cleo Soul, I love. Um, she's got, I'm, I'm more of a R and B like neo soul kind of girl. That's where my, mm -hmm. like my heart is. Um, Cleo soul. I love, um, Rhapsody. I love, I like a lot of female rappers. Um, Rhapsody. and, uh, there's one more I'm looking for cause I can't think. And I love the female them. rappers are, are taking over. They are. And I love it. I really do love it. Cause I think it's time they yeah. get their shine. I think they're really talented. Mm -hmm. Um, used to be uh because it used to then the quality has really gone up like insanely sometimes i you'd notice sometimes in the in the past that they would be like oh just because she's a female she you know or mm -hmm. you know she she got this mm -hmm. uh hit, these hits but yeah like now you're actually seeing the quality but i think that was necessary like the first just putting women up there regardless of the quality was probably a necessary step for this yeah. to happen now because it gave yes. people confidence and you know yes Absolutely. Seeing the numbers, like let's let's work with these women. Yes. Yeah. I um. Oh, uh, Sano Sano Allegra. S N O H. Yeah. S N O H. Yeah. Sano. Yeah. A A L E G R A. She's like my favorite. I love her. She makes really good music. Her and Cleo Sol are like my two, um, like people that people might not know about. Um, Tierra Wack. I really like. She's a rapper. Um. 
How do you write that? I'll just T probably like yeah. tag these people in this clip and okay. <laughs> yeah, tear whack. I love. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just a he. I love I love like female rappers and Neil Soul and so those mm. those are like my favorite right now. That's good. I'm also gonna check them out later though. Yeah. All right. Cool. Hey Kelsey, thank you for joining. You're welcome. And, thank uh, you so much. I'll uh, I'll keep you posted. I'll um, yeah. I'll, if you want, I'll send you some clips as well that I'm gonna put out. Cause for first, sure. I think Monday, usually Mondays or Tuesdays, we put out a full episode, and then okay. a bunch of snippets and segments come out with that. Dope. Um, but I can thank send you for you you inviting me. It's been a pleasure. It's been my pleasure too. It was great yeah. talk. And you're the yeah. first uh, actress we have, because uh, oh, right cool. now we've had a couple of uh, artists. We've had a sports agent. Uh, you know, so okay. I'd like to keep the variety in there. So, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Well, well, good luck with everything, and I'll 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 be sure to tune in. Thanks. You too. Yeah. And uh, let me know when uh, when you know anything about the Netflix show. For sure. For sure. I'll let you know. Cool. I will. Awesome. Okay. Hey. Thanks so much. Bye. Hey. Enjoy your day. You too. Bye.